It's a new episode of Real School. And this is the sound of science in action. Why these Duval students are getting fired up over science at one local museum and what cool things they're learning about. They're taking on famous figures past and present. My name is Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. Hi, my name is Saka Julia. Hi, my name is Roberta Flack. We're giving you a behind the scenes look at this wax museum at a Southside Elementary School. What lessons we learned along the way. Plus, storybook characters are coming to life at one elementary school as students take on their favorite books. But it wasn't just students who got decked out. We've got the scoop on what the staff did to celebrate. This is too real and it happens too often. A vivid reenactment aimed at showing students the dangers of drunk driving. Coming up, we're showing you the elaborate scene and hearing the sobering statistics. This is a real school. This is real school. This is the Vaishnavi show. Hey, that's, that's not fair. On what show? about me? Guys, guys, relax. I'm just kidding. This is real school and you're watching it right now. to this episode of Real School. Today we want to highlight an important issue, the dangers of drinking and driving. Did you know that about one third of all Americans are involved in an alcohol-related crash during their lifetime? That's why we're going to the Morocco Shrine Center to witness a very powerful event. From the broken glass to the beat up car and the shattered windshield, it's hard not to believe that this dramatic scene isn't real. But just ask these first responders. What we're going to do is demonstrate for you the reality of what we see day in and day out. And they'll tell you reenactments like this are very close to the truth. Which is why they've invited so many students to attend the STUD rally. STUD is short for Stop Teen Underage Drinking. They want to get a strong message across. Don't ever consume alcohol and then get behind the wheel of a car and drive under no circumstances. A group of students were asked to pose as victims. You can see they're covered in makeup resembling blood, as if they were just involved in a drunk driving accident. You experience exactly what the law enforcement and medics and all of them have to do in a situation like that. And I think, you know, for everyone seeing it, to know, like, to see how it feels. Real firefighters use the jaws of life to pry students out of the mangled vehicles. And at the same time, I want you to come in and touch the tip of the finger to the tip of the nose, just like this. A state trooper conducts a field sobriety test on the teen posing as the drunk driver. It's the, it's the hardest part, part of my job is to notify next to Ken. Uh, two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, you're knocking on the door, tell them, tell the loved one that their family passed away. As these first responders work to get students to safety, they remind students that they are literally racing against time. They say victims who are injured in crashes have a better chance of survival if they can get from the scene to surgery in less than an hour. It's very eye-opening to me as a senior in high school, being in those years of school and experiencing like drinking and seeing people drinking and driving off and not realizing what the effects it could do to you. As if the scene weren't realistic enough, this Trauma One helicopter from Chance flew in, showing students that ambulances aren't always enough. In the end, several victims were pronounced dead at the scene, and the teen accused of drinking arrested. Even though these student actors could walk away from this reenactment, first responders say what these teens witnessed could very easily happen to them if they're not careful. Not everyone involved in a drunk driving accident is so lucky. Yeah, I mean, it's in the movies. You have superheroes in the movies. Nobody's invincible. There's other ways to get home. Call the parents, call a friend, somebody that hasn't been drinking. Call somebody to come pick you up and take you home. The best thing you can do to protect yourself is to never drink and drive. Also, don't get in a car with someone you know who has been drinking. If you need help, troopers say you should never hesitate to find another ride or call someone to pick you up. Now we're going to turn it over to D'Angelo. He has more on an event that's turning students into pretty successful businessmen and women. 
Vaishnavi, this is a really cool event because it involves some amazing students and some really cool products. In fact, I think I want to go buy some. We do duct tape items. We create things anywhere. And these are all student made from small purses, large purses, your wallet. I know you love Spider-Man. On the outside, you can find tables and booths full of handmade crafts. And on the inside, you made that all by yourself? Mm -hmm. Students were just as excited to show off the work. These are the sights and sounds of the very first Fall Fest market day at the Alden Road Exceptional Student Center. The school has been transformed to look like an open air market. Students made everything from soap to journals and duct tape purses and bags. Men and women from all over the community were lining up to buy them. One, two, three, can you put it in the, in the bag? Our students have worked so hard since the first day of school making handmade products with a lot of love and a lot of care. No matter what their ability is, each student has been able to make something and they are so proud to show it to their parents and friends. Teachers say this market day was a chance for students to show everyone that they are capable of making some pretty amazing things, no matter their physical limitations. For instance, check out these Christmas cards and listen to how students are making them. How do we make them? How do we make? You make our items using assistive technology. Every one of our students has their own computer station, and each one is different. So Gregory, for example, uses a mouse with his hands. He also uses his feet. Um, <laughs> And he has got an on-screen keyboard where he goes in. We have three different programs that we use to create the cards. Teacher April Hill says these cards are very popular. We just made an order for a company. Um, they ordered our Christmas cards, a bundle, um, $250 worth of Christmas cards that they're going to be sending out for their company. And, we, and our Christmas cards are a big seller. But make no mistake, this isn't about money or about how many customers come by. We're doing something that no one else has done. And actually, the things our kids have come up with, I may have started with part of an idea, they have taken it to another level. They have created things that are so much bigger and better than what I could even dream that they could do. So we're just really proud of them. It's about giving these students a chance to do some great things. How does that make you feel, Ramsey? Happy. Happy. How does that make you feel, Johnny? Happy. Happy. These guys work really, really hard, and a lot of times people don't get to see what they're capable of, and they are capable of great and amazing things. By the way, all of the money the students raise goes back into the businesses so they can make more products. In just a few minutes, we're going to bring you another cool story about how the district is helping another group of unique students, students who are deaf and hard of hearing. Vaishnavi will have more from Waterleaf Elementary, including how their state-of-the-art technology is helping students learn. Speaking of cool stories, Lola has one right now. Lola, I hear that this one has something to do with posing. Lola, Lola. Oh, hey, D'Angelo. At this school, they're doing more than just striking a pose. They're bringing history to life. Hi, my name is Roberta Flack. I'm at Earhart. I became the first woman to cross the Atlantic Ocean. Hi, my name is Mohanda Skaramchand Gandhi. All under one roof, you could find everyone from Sally Ride to William Shakespeare, Gabby Douglas, and even Elvis Presley. That same year, I was drafted into the Army and served for two and a half years. Okay, so it's pretty obvious these are all kids dressed up as famous figures, past and present. But what you may not know is that this is a wax museum at Twin Lakes Elementary School. Fifth graders were asked to dress up as famous people and act like wax figures in a museum, which meant they had to stand still, kind of like a mannequin. They also created storyboards full of important facts. I was famous for my mind-twisting theories of the universe, such as the photoelectric effect and the theory of relativity. Speaking of facts, each student memorized a one-minute speech. And when students, parents, or teachers came to their exhibit, they had to recite their speech. Parent Barry Underwood says that this has been a great experience for his son, Thomas Edison. I patented 1,093 inventions, so next time you turn on the light, think of me, Thomas Edison. I think it's an excellent experience for them because they get to you know, practice public speaking as well as the repetition to be able to memorize it and actually learn something historical. Um, I myself love reading biographies, so it's been fascinating to, to go by and see a lot of the displays of kids and actually learn more interesting facts. And it wasn't hard to learn interesting facts about these figures. I will say I met uh, Condoleezza Rice today and heard some interesting facts about her that I did not know and um, actually want to go to the library and to get her biography. 
and learn more about it. In 2005, I won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor in Clint Eastwood's Million Dollar Baby. So whether it was Morgan Freeman, Jane Goodall, or any other famous figure, the goal for these students was not only to learn... Hi, I'm Debbie Terry. I'm one of the best-selling authors. ...but to also have a good time. My legacy still lives on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Those students looked and sounded great. Good job, guys. We're just getting started with real school. The heat is on, and these students couldn't be more excited. What cool scientific lessons are taking place at a local museum? Plus, a bittersweet goodbye for Ed Pratt Daniels as he makes his last school visit before retiring. What he saw and who he spoke to. We'll have those stories and more, but first, some trivia. The first ten amendments to the U.S. Constitution is known as the Bill of Rights. And those amendments officially went into effect on December 15, 1791. Can you guess which one of these amendments is not part of the Bill of Rights? Is it A, the right to trial by jury, B, freedom of speech, press, religion, and petition, C, women's right to vote, or D, the right to keep and bear arms? We'll have the answer after the break. Hey, it's me, D'Angelo. Before the break, we asked you which of these U.S. constitutional amendments is not part of the Bill of Rights or the First Ten Amendments. If you guess C, women's right to vote, you're correct. That is actually the 19th Amendment. Here in Duval County, we know that learning doesn't have to take place in the classroom. Field trips are a great way to learn about science. In fact, let's go on one now. How often do you get a chance to watch a snake slither or take a trip to outer space? Walk through these sights and sounds of Duval County's history, or take a step outside and get a closer look at Mother Nature. Students attending Sheffield Elementary had a chance to do all of this and more, thanks to a fun field trip to the Museum of Science and History, or MOSH. It was a chance for students to try out hands-on exhibits and learn about everything from the human body to life under the sea. As students toured the museum, it didn't take long for their visit to get explosive, literally. <laughs> Want to see that again? The man behind all of these neat tricks is Eddie Whistler. He's the school program manager at MOSH. These aren't just neat tricks. They're all scientific experiments. In fact, that's how he began this presentation, with the question, what is science? He wants to make the subject more fun for kids. When I was taught, it was taught out of a book, or it was taught out of a transparency uh, up on a wall and you copy your notes and you collect your notebook and you, well, you study. And that's about how you learn about the world. What we do here is we learn about the world by demonstrating and by kids coming down and actually doing. And boy, did these kids get to try their hand at science. They got to test out different theories, including what would happen to balloons placed in liquid nitrogen. The answer, those balloons got hard and students had fun stomping them. I think that it captures the kids' imagination because we're actually fiddling with the real world and they get to see firsthand. Uh, they get to feel firsthand. They get to hear firsthand. They get to taste firsthand how the world functions, how it works. Whether it was their time spent with Mr. Rissler or the rest of the museum, we're pretty sure these kids left with a lot of memorable lessons in science. They're going to leave with a perception of science that is different than what they perceived before they came in. That's one field trip I wish I was a part of. While we're on the topic of cool ways to learn, let's turn to Vaishnavi. Hi, D'Angelo. Do you know that there are 300 students in the district who are deaf or hard of hearing? And a lot of great people work with them every day. We're going to show you how many of these students are making strides. I ride. I ride. Ann. Ann, the best. Good job. Meet Tegan. He's four years old and is in pre-kindergarten. This is Anthony. He's in the third grade. And he's been learning in the district since he was three. And this is Matthew Scully. He's a fifth grader who hasn't been at Waterleaf long, but he really enjoys it. These three students are all different, but they have something in common. They all have difficulty hearing and need to wear some sort of device in and around their ears. But they're all making amazing progress. Just ask. When Waterleaf opened, um, he came here last year, 
and he was probably s using one word utterances to describe what he wants. Now he's able to, you know, give you a full sentence to tell you what he wants or just what happened at school. When he first came to the program, he had no speech at all. By the time he entered kindergarten, his speech had picked up dramatically. Uh, he was saying, you know, full sentences, people could understand him. What do you like about your teachers who help you out? I say give you extra help that, to get you to understand what's going on here. Matthew is a student who learns in classrooms with some students who also have hearing aids and some who don't. But Waterleaf also has classes strictly for students who are hard of hearing. In both cases, you'll notice their teachers wearing devices like this around their neck. They're state-of-the-art digital FM systems that allow teachers to get in sync with their students' hearing aids and speak directly into them. That way students aren't distracted by background noise. Many of our kids have language gaps and our goal is not to just create one year of learning for one year of education. Our goal usually is to get 18 months so that we can close. That's the only way you're going to close the gap. The school district has three audiologists like this man whose job is to visit different schools every day. One of the many things they do to help is check out students' equipment. Here's something else. You may think this flooring is just regular flooring, but it's not. It's built with special underlay. These wall tiles are actually acoustic tiles, and the ceiling is also treated. Very appreciative of the board and all the support of the ESC uh, administration because they really went to great lengths to make sure that this was um, a premier program and that this building was really suited for our kids to give optimal results. Waterleaf isn't the only school in the district helping students like Tegan, Anthony, and Matthew. I think this is the best school in the world. But it's clear these students are making great progress and their parents and teachers couldn't be more proud. And it's kind of funny and ironic because now, you know, we're in such a rush to get him to speak and now we're like, be quiet because he talks all the time, um, which is a good thing. When you have a child with a disability, you worry about any type of disability. You worry about them being able to tell you what they need when they don't feel well, what they want. It makes me feel really happy because they have a special program designed just for my son and meets his needs. For more about these programs, be sure to visit duvalschools.org. We're almost done with real school. Soon we're showing you a parade that combines costumes and books. We'll explain the meaning behind these get-ups and explain why some of the teachers look like this. Plus, a memorable visit from our former superintendent. Why Ed Pratt Daniels chose to make this school his last school visit and who he spoke to. But first, some trivia. December 7th marks the day when the Japanese Navy attacked the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. This led to the U.S. becoming involved in World War II. Do you know what year that attack took place? Is it A, 1939, B, 1940, C, 1941, or D, 1942? We've got the answer right after the break. Hey guys, right before the break, we asked you a trivia question. What year did the Japanese attack on the U.S. naval base at Pearl Harbor take place? If you guessed C, 1941, you got the right answer. We all have a favorite book. I like the Pretty Little Liars series. But have you ever thought of becoming your favorite book? You've heard of the Thanksgiving Day Parade and also the New Year's Day Parade. But have you heard of the Character Parade at SP Livingston Elementary School? It's pretty cool. Just imagine some of your favorite children's books like Mr. Popper's Penguin, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, or Harry Potter. Now, imagine a group of adorable students dressed up like those books. Aren't they cute? We thought so too. For this parade, hundreds of students from pre-kindergarten to second grade walked all over the school in costume. Each classroom picked out their favorite book and dressed up as characters from that book. I think you can guess who these kids are. They're from Alvin and the Chipmunks, the Squeakquel. These kids, Harry Potter, this group is from Where the Wild Things Are, and this group... You guessed it, they're from the book, The Balloon Farm. Those books are just to name a few on a long list of favorites represented on this character parade. But we couldn't help but notice that the students weren't the only ones dressed up. 
Check out these ladies. They're all part of the school's leadership team, and this is the principal. They're covered in paint, and their inspiration was this book, A Bad Case of Stripes. I wonder how the students reacted. Well, throughout the day, if any of them got a glimpse of us, they were asking me, the little girl needs to eat her lima beans for her stripes to go away, and they're telling me, hi, Camilla, you need to eat your lima beans, and, and really getting into it. So we know that it wasn't just us coming around and reading the story, but that they latched onto it, and the same thing with the books that they were reading in their class. If you've spent enough time in the school district, you know that reading is really important. And it's no coincidence that everyone here at SP Livingston is involving students as young as pre-kindergarten. Right now what we're trying to do is build the five blocks of reading. We've got to start at the very beginning and we want to encourage a love of reading and this is a perfect age to do that. It certainly didn't hurt that as these students made their way around school, their peers on the sidelines were handing them treats. At the end of the parade, students gathered up for a big assembly and heard from some special guests, including school board member Paula Wright. We're coming to encourage the children to love reading. This isn't something you do because you have to go and read. We're teaching them how you can become the characters in your book and kind of just adding more to their imagination. The principal says that it took a makeup artist two hours to cover them all up in paint. They are truly dedicated. I know someone else who's really dedicated. Vaishmini, you know who I'm talking about. I do, Lola. We're talking about former superintendent Ed Pratt Daniels and we were there when he made his final visit before retiring. Mr. Pratt Daniels made a final visit to Robert E. Lee, where he once served as a principal for several years. The first part of his visit was touring a part of the school that's still under construction, which explains why he's wearing that hard hat. This building will eventually become the new main building, and Principal Hall showed him around. It's going to be a great new building now, but while preserving the, the architectural heritage. Uh, but as important as the building is, what's really important is what goes on inside. So it's the daily interaction of teachers with students and the support from, from great principals like Dr. Hall. The next part of his visit took him inside the classroom. Two classrooms to be exact. He talked to students about his own experiences as a student and what led him to pursue a career in education. He also gave students advice about working hard for their education. The questions today were incredibly um, cogent. They were um, good questions about how I got to where I am. Uh, obviously, they're connecting on their future. Some of them knew what they wanted to do, some didn't. Um, but I think they're searching for how they can make a difference in, in the lives of other people. I bet that was a neat visit for Mr. Pratt Daniels. Well, we're almost done with real school, but first, I think D'Angelo wants to share just one more bit of trivia before we go. You know I can't resist some good trivia. A lot of important historical events happened in December. Can you guess which one of these did not take place in December? Is it A, the disbanding of the Soviet Union, B, the Boston Tea Party, C, the Wright brothers' first flight, or D, the end of World War I? Do you have your answer? It's D, the end of World War I. That happened November 11th, 1918. Well, it looks like it's time for us to say goodbye. Be sure to watch out for our next episode of Real School. We hope you enjoyed the show and can't wait to hang out with you again. In the meantime, you can always visit DuvalSchools.org for more good news. From all of us, thanks for watching and have a great day.